Hello guys, it's Aaron here from Demsec. Uh, we're going to be restarting the uh, Beginner Hacker Series. Um, so it's going to be called the Beginner Hacker Series 2.0. Uh, there's been a lot of demand for it, so we thought we would restart it with everything up to date. So we're going to be using Kali, uh, we're going to be using VirtualBox, using the same stuff as what we was doing with the first Beginner Hacker Series, but everything's just going to be updated and yeah we'll um yeah see what's changed uh this should be quite a bit that's changed uh that, that that video was made quite a few years ago so uh yeah let's get straight into it so what we're going to do is is we're going to use virtualbox and kali so we've got these two open we're going to go to virtualbox and it depending on what uh operating system you're using uh for me we're using windows so just going to download that quickly Wait for that to download, and while that's doing that, what we can do is download Kali. So just go to the Kali website, the links will be in the description. Uh, we're going to do Kali 64 bit and we're going to do the ISO. So we'll save them. Uh, then VirtualBox should be done. So while we are waiting for Kali to download, we'll just set up VirtualBox. So we're just going to do the, the simple setup, the usual stuff. So next, change all of this if you need to. Uh, but I'm just going to keep mine on the C drive. Keep all that the same. Yeah, we'll keep that. Keep that. So what we'll do is we'll press finish. That should open up VirtualBox. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to create a new virtual machine. So if we press new and we call this Kali machine. And if we choose Linux and Debian, we're going to give, I'm going to give this 8 gig of RAM. You don't have to. Uh, we're just going to create a new virtual hard disk, choose VDI, dynamically allocate the space. And I'm going to give this 20 gig of RAM, uh, storage, even. We've already done the RAM. And then what we're going to do is just double click this, our uh, new virtual machine. And we're going to click this button here. Going to choose the Linux ISO that we just downloaded. Press open, press start, and it will load. So if we give this a little while, that was a very quick while. Uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to do um, go all, all the way down to install. What you can also do is uh, use it as a live boot. So you can stick it on a USB um, and use it anywhere on any machine uh, that isn't using secure boot. So if we press install, uh, we'll, we'll be given with um, multiple menus that we have to go through. So if we just quickly run through this, we just need to press enter for English, depending on where you are. Um, United Kingdom for me, British English. We'll let it do what it needs to do. So here we can choose a host name. I'm just going to leave it as Kali. Don't need to put in a domain name. Uh, choose a root password, something you're going to remember or something secure. Uh, so I will, for this purposes, I'm just going to use Tor. So T double O R. Enter it in again. And then for this, you can either do guided use the entire disk, which I'm going to use just for ease of use, or you can do uh, encrypt it. Um, some people may want to do that, but for these purposes, we're just going to do uh, guided use entire disk. Just press enter, choose the uh, disk that you want to use. So there's only one option here as there's only one virtual virtual disk. And then we're going to do all files in one petition. We're going to finish partitioning that disk. We're going to write the changes. We're just going to let that do what it needs to do. So that this at this part, that it's just going to install everything, um, and then shortly after that, we should be able to get straight into Kali. So once it's 
installed onto the disk, uh, you'll get this uh, message if we want to use a network mirror. For these purposes, we're going to choose yes. Uh, we're not going to use a proxy, so you just press enter. And then we just let it configure apt. So what this is asking us is if we want to uh, install a Grub bootloader on the hard disk. So uh, this allows us to choose what uh, operating system to use. Uh, so we're just going to press yes. Um, we're just going to choose the uh, slash dev slash SDA. What we are going to do very shortly is power down the machine as there is one setting that I haven't set, which um, I would like to set. So if we just go to machine and shut down. And if we just go to settings here, I'm going to go to system, go to processor and give it four cores. Um, and all of that is on. And we're just going to enable the 3D acceleration. And if we turn up the video memory slightly, like I said, this is all, I'm just doing this. Um, you don't have to. You can start the machine by double clicking the Kali machine. I'm just gonna make this full screen really quick. And if we just press enter just to make it run quicker. So we have a username here. So if you remember, we used root and then my password was Tor. So we are going to do a few maintenance things. We're going to open up terminal. And what we're going to do is we're going to do apt update to update the packages. So the packages don't actually update any of the software but what it does is it updates the packages from the repository so the repository that will be say on uh Kali's website or in their uh servers will be there will be new packages on those on their repository and then we are trying to update all of the the list that is in our virtual machine so it will go to there see that there's new stuff and as you can see there, there's 1,413 packages which can be upgraded. So at this point, it hasn't actually upgraded any of the software. So what we can do is we can do apt upgrade. And this will actually upgrade any of the software. It's highly recommended that you try and use the terminal to get used to uh, command line um there's loads of support out there um and if you've watched any of our videos before there's plenty of different uh command line tools that we use so there there is loads of ways to learn the command line uh it takes a little while to remember everything but you'll get there eventually um and it's it's yeah some people like using the gui but it is definitely best to Try and use the command line as much as you can to try and familiarize yourself with it. So this will take a little while, so we'll just wait for this to sort itself out. So halfway through the update, we'll get this uh, list changes. So you can either read it all or just by pressing enter and going through each line, or you can just press spacebar, which will go through each page. Or you can just press Q, which will quit the whole thing. So this is just configuring Wireshark. So we should allow non-super users to be able to catch your packets. We're really going to be the only ones using this, but it's, if you are going to set up users, then at, like for yourself, so you don't always constantly work in root, which is also recommended, uh, just in case if you ruin things, then um, that means you can use Wireshark to capture packets. So with apt-get, you never got this progress bar. So it's it's kind of a a new feature that apt has um, that has given us. So yeah, it's quite nice to see how far along it's progressed through. Uh, 
Okay, so now the update's done, we're going to install a VirtualBox guest, which will allow us to make the virtual machine full screen, so we don't have to deal with this small uh, screen here. Uh, so what we're going to do is do apps install dash y, which is yes, basically, so you don't have to press yes when you go to uh, press enter to uh, install. And then we're going to do virtual box dash guest dash x11. I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully it does work. Sometimes it was a bit odd, but uh, we'll see. And it works, look at that. So this shouldn't take too long to install. So once that's done, what we want to do is we want to reboot. So as you can see, it's gone full screen. So what we're going to do is log back in again so you can see how it works. With the desktop, desktop environment. And then what you can do is you can go to view full screen mode, switch, and then you have your Kali machine there in full screen. Um, so some people <laughs> might struggle to get out of this um, if you've only got the one screen. Yeah, so if you go down here, you can press that to make it smaller. Um, or what you can do is press the right control, which is your host key, um, and then it should come out. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, let us know why. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. All of the links for the downloads will be in the description down below and how to get hold of both me and Dale. So until we see you next time, thank you for watching and yeah, see you in the next video.